Okay, guys, who wants to see a stack injection test on not one, but two different small block forwards? We got a 331 stroker and a 408 stroker. Let's get it done. Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Holder, and today we're talking about stack injection. That's right. But first, welcome to the channel, as always. Well, let's say you're walking around at a car show or cars and coffee or wherever. Somebody pops a hood. You see a four-wheel carburetor, you're like, Eh, young, that's probably okay. Dual quad, even better. Tunnel ram, yes, tunnel ram the awesomeness. Or blower, all of that's great, but the best thing to find under the hood when you pop that baby open is stack injection. That's right, the question is, it looks awesome, but how well does it perform? That's why we're here today. We're going to take a look at stack injection, not just on one small block Ford, a 331 stroker crate motor from Ford Racing, but also a bigger 408. It looks good. Let's find out if it makes power. Hey guys, if you're new, welcome to the channel. But what happens if you have a question? Hey, I saw this video, but I wanted to ask Richard a question. Well, you're in luck. You get to do that. Join us nightly, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on the live feed. You can come on, join the group. If I don't have an answer to your question, chances are there are lots of bright guys. They might have an answer. So if you've got a question about any of the video that you just saw, or maybe you're working on a project, Join us live, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, on this channel. Okay, guys, let's take a look at stack injection, which is awesome. It looks cool, but let's find out if it actually makes good power. A lot of guys, it's a reason enough just to put it on there because it looks awesome. I mean, when you open the hood and see a typical four-barrel, whether it's a single plane or a dual plane, that's cool. But it's even cooler when it's stack injection, and we ran this test both on a 331 from Ford Racing and also on a 408. So let's take a look first at the 331. This test motor started out as a Z331 Piaz and Paul uh, crate motor from the guys at Ford Racing. It came as a almost a complete long block minus the induction system. This this combination had fairly high power up, but was rated at 515 horsepower and 415 foot pounds of torque by Ford Racing when run with a single plane high rise intake manifold. In this case, they ran it with a Parker funnel web, which is exactly what I ran it with here because I happen to have one. And we run a 750 Holley carburetor, inch and three quarter headers. But let's take a look at what they put inside that got this thing to make so much power. First of all, this thing was fairly high compression. It was almost 12 to one. They ran the set. This thing had uh, forged internals. It had a scat forged crank. It had forged rods. It had forged H beam rods. It had Molly pistons. It had a big camshaft in it. This thing was 525 lift and 258, 266 uh, degree duration. It had 165 rockers on it. It had four uh, cylinder heads. It had some high flow. Uh, Z304P aluminum, uh, the Z, Z heads from back in the day. So this thing was, was set up to actually make fairly good power. And it, it actually did. In this case, when we ran this thing with the yeah. funnel web intake and our long tube headers and MSD distributor and our 750 Holly on this thing, our combination produced 526 horsepower. So it made a little bit more on our dyno the way that we tested it compared to the way that Ford rating uh, rated it. And the reason for that is they probably rated it a little on the low side to make sure that everything makes the power that they want it to so that there's no difference. So a guy gets a good combination every time and 406 foot pounds of torque. So it did very well. And that was with the funnel web intake manifold and the carburetor. So now let's take a look and see what, how well this thing does when we add the stack injection. And here is our stack injection. The stack injection actually made a little bit less peak power. And the peak power checked in at 518 horsepower, but peak torque was way up with the stack injection. Longer runner lengths and all, 438 foot-pounds of torque. In fact, the stack injection was better than the carburation from the bottom had we run it really down low. But this is a pretty big camshaft but all the way out to 6,800 RPM or so. Now let's talk about the stack injection a little bit. This one was called the classic fuel injection, which is, I think, no longer available or it had long been since sold. This was run, run way back. And what it was was fuel injection designed to look like Weber carburetors. And it did. It looked in, a lot like Weber carburetors. It had the injectors, inject, injectors housed inside the body 
of what otherwise would be the carburetor and so everything was kind of hidden which was kind of nice the one downside or potential downside to this and it's something that we a problem that we eliminated on before this test is that the throttle bodies themselves flowed very well and you could make a lot of power given the flow rates of the throttle bodies but the lower intake manifold was always a problem the design of this lower intake manifold goes all the way back to the shelby days when they were putting these things on cobras on 289s and stuff and unfortunately the low Lower intake manifold at least the castings that they were using for this test didn't flow nearly as well as the throttle bodies themselves so the cure was to do some porting on the lower manifold which this lower manifold was definitely hand ported to improve the flow rate and we know from previous testing that ported versus unported manifold yielded quite a bit of power so this had a ported lower manifold it had stack injection on it we controlled this with a fast xfi management system and it all worked out very well so you can see the power difference between the kind of longer runner stack injection and our funnel web single plane intake manifold you know at the very top we got a little bit a little bit a little bit more peak power past 6800 but we we got into the you can see on the carbureted deal we got into some valve float with the springs that four racing supplied on those z heads so there you have it stack injection looks kind of like a winner there and one thing it does make good power as shown here but it also looks very cool let's find out how well it did on a 408 okay we've taken a look at the 331 stroker with a stack injection now let's take a look at the larger 408 stroker with the same stack injection in fact we use the same throttle bodies obviously the taller deck 351 windsor base combination required a different lower intake manifold but the same thing was applied to that let's take a look at our 408 stroker so this was a 408 that it had a scat crank it had forged rods it had forged pistons a four inch stroke crank and a 4030 bore that's how we got 408 inches out of our 351 this thing was top this was going to be basically a street motor actually i think that this was originally going to go in a cobra or something so this was a, a more of a streetable 408 combination it was run with a set of Airflow Research 185 heads. Normally, we would put the bigger 205 heads on there, but the 185 heads were, that was probably enough to support this power level. It had a decent sized camshaft in it because, you know, you want it to be a little bit cam if you're driving around in a Cobra with side pipes on it. It was a 555, 576 lift. It was a 236, 240 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. This thing was a retrofit hydraulic roller because this block was originally not a, a roller block. We had an MSD distributor. We had hooker. They, they were coated Fox chassis headers that we ran the test with. This thing had crane gold uh, 1.6 ratio roller rockers on it. We ran an 850 carburetor and a Victor Junior single plane intake manifold on it. We adjusted the oil and, and stuff as we always do and went through jetting and timing. This thing ran uh, best at in 35 to 36 degrees of total timing so run in this manner in carbureted Aww. form with the victor jr intake manifold and the 850 holly carburetor this thing produced 527 horsepower and 523 foot pounds this thing was 9.9 .9 to 1 uh, static compression with the combination of um piston dish and 185 airflow research heads let's take a look now at what happened when we installed the stack injection on here you can see the stack injection made more power basically everywhere on this combination compared to the single plane victor jr peak power was up to 541 horsepower peak torque was even more 545 horsepower and as you can see the longer runners basically of the stack injection improved power output everywhere compared to the single plane and the same thing that we went through with the stack injection on the smaller 331 we also went through on the 351 windsor the 351 Windsor lower intake casting, again, does not flow nearly as well as the, the uh, CFI classic fuel injection throttle bodies did. So effort was put into porting the lower manifold to get the thing to at least get close to the same flow and take advantage of the airflow offered by the classic fuel injection. In this case, we could have made more power with a different combination, you know, more compression and more camshaft and things like that. The throttle bodies themselves will support more power than we're making here, but the lower intake manifold did not. So we wanted to make sure porting the lower manifold to try to get, you know, at 
least the power that we could get out of this combination that the stack injection had to offer. But again, like the 331, stack injection obviously looks awesome. And if you pop the hood, it's especially of a Cobra. Uh, it looks cool with a single carburetor on there, but looks even more awesomer with stack injection. Armature holder, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.